Welcome to Lauren's Crazy Pet Show. We are a fun, upbeat, positive show celebrating animals and pets and the humans who love them. And we are actually crazy about all animals and pets. And we're also crazy about Connecticut. So today we are on location in Southington, Connecticut. This is Jenny and she has invited us to this fabulous event. Yes, we're here at the second annual Bark for Q to benefit Help Willie's friends out of Durham. I love that. It's a bark but you. Yes. <laughs> yep. And it's all for a good cause. Absolutely. Help Willie's Friends is an organization that accepts monetary and product donations and distributes them to the rescues and shelters throughout the state of Connecticut as they need them. I love that. And we're going to find out a little bit more and we're going to have everybody celebrate with us, of course. And we're going to start off today. Oh, you're going to love this, Jenna. Everybody, you're going to love this. We had the most amazing experience. We got to go in close and personal with the most rarest Amur leopard cubs. Oh. When they were little babies, you would not believe it. You love little kitties, right? Who doesn't? I know, these are so precious. Let's take a look. Look, this is amazing. This is one of the rarest and most endangered animals on earth. And it is one of two cubs born right here at the Connecticut Beardsley Zoo. And this is sort of the granddaddy. Yeah, <laughs> maybe. He's, he's yeah. the head honcho at the Connecticut Beardsley Zoo. And this is absolutely amazing, Greg. What a victory and what a really yeah. sort of, not a surprise, but a, a wonderful, wonderful happening. Yeah, these are, these two little Amur cubs are just tremendous. Again, as you mentioned, it's the most endangered species of cat on the planet. They're only potentially about 50 to 60 in uh. the wild right now, down in North Korea, China, and Russian border along the Amur River, which they get their name from. And in zoos around the world, maybe another 100 or so. Wow. Maybe 120. So I mean, their numbers dwindled down from, say, what to now? Well, their, their range was huge. These animals roamed a lot of the eastern part of, the, of uh, Europe, right. uh, Russia, and then the cold weather. These are cold weather animals. These are animals that live in the mountains. Uh, very similar snow leopards. So snow leopards in India, these guys in Russia and China. But again, because of habitat loss and poaching, the population is shrinking and shrinking oh, and shrinking down to just about nothing. And so just like the tigers, these are part of the SSP program, Species Survival Plan. The male and female were matched together. The female came from the Copenhagen Zoo, wow. which again brought in a total new bloodline. Then the SSP matched our male to our female, Freya to Soshi. And it's been a while. I mean, we've been waiting for a few years for them to actually have offspring. Uh, so we're watching him day and night and we found them have their the offspring were born. Unfortunately, the female started grooming the kittens and would not stop grooming them. Hyper grooming is something that just becomes like chewing your tongue. You just don't can't stop it. Right. And so we lost one to that. When we saw it happening, we got in here, but one was lost to the grooming and the little uh, melanistic one here lost her tail, which we then had to have surgery on and we had to worry about you know, infection and things like that. But our, our animal care professionals are so very, very good that uh, we were able to get these guys moving pretty quickly. Now they're being raised by you we're, and the wonderful being, staff yeah, here. Yeah, the animal care professionals, again, were doing yeoman's work round to the clock. get these going around the clock. But that's and not what you, you would have rather, the mother. Oh, no, 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 yes. And much I think mother, people should understand we much, that. We'd much rather see oh, mom do God. this. And mom actually was not, she was taking too much care of them. They wouldn't have survived with her. Again, we're very, very fortunate that we had these two that are surviving because what's happening now is we're able to have them yeah. learn from each other. Their claws and their teeth are getting stronger They're and stronger. They're getting bigger, right? And as we get closer to weaning, just like we did with the tigers, we'll, we will cease to have any interaction with them and let them grow up to be leopards. When we went in with the tigers, you didn't have these branches, and that was a huge thrill. And yeah. they did, they seemed a little bit more docile. Now, these guys uh, these guys will, are on top of these branches. They're, these are climbers, they're mountain animals, to give them the opportunity to start climbing and learning how to climb and learning how to fall. Leopards are a little more complex than tigers, where the tiger cubs would be a little more sedate and let you walk over and they'd kind of lay next to you. These guys will, at this age, are attacking, are using their teeth and using their claws, which is exactly what we want them to do. So all these guys will stay together until they start to reach breeding age. And again, we want them to stay together because we want them to learn. So they'll stay together to about breeding age, and then they'll be separated, just like just like the tigers. Uh, we we don't know who's going to stay, who's going to go. Right. Uh, we don't know who is going to be with us uh, for the yes. extended length of time. So I'm assuming my assumption is, uh, just like with the SSP program, we may lose the male, father may leave us, and the mother may stay, the mother may leave us, the father may stay. 
We have no idea. What our mission here at Connecticut Bears of Zoo is to is conservation and education. We help people learn about these animals again now that how critically endangered these guys are. These are these are animals that within a blink of an eye could be extinct on the planet. Oh, it's so sad and that's and, why you do this. And so what we hope we hope that uh, that people learn that this is what we have to do to protect our our, our wild heritage. Um, we there is a hope there is a hope that these animals will be not these guys, but there is a, you know, down the road we may have a release program and these mm -hmm. animals may actually get put back in the wild where we really like to see them. Because that's always your hope. That is always our hope that that happens. That happens the way they go back to where they belong. I Having know. offspring like this is a once in a lifetime, maybe a once in a lifetime thing. Seeing these guys uh, is just tremendous. Oh, it's just, it's uh, amazing. And to be able to interact with them for at least, a, at least a short period of time, you know, is very special. Aren't they beautiful? They were adorable. Oh, they're so fluffy. They're oh. so rare. They were so amazing. And now they're getting so big. Yeah. No longer can they be on our laps. No. <laughs> All right, well. Well, there's so much to do now, yes. so we're going to come back, Jenny, right? You have a lot going on here. We have so much to share with you. So much. And so many pups all around. I can't wait to show everybody out there, so stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. Uh, Lauren's Crazy Pet Show will be right back. Hi. I'm here to talk to you about Stairwell Books, a company that you need to know about. We focus on fresh writing by great authors. Books like Abernathy, an American noir Abernathy starts with a body frozen in the snow. Who is she? A small town is just a jail with no bars. The question is, are you the jailer or are you the inmate? Or books like Tales from a Prairie Journal by Rita Jerram, who has novelized her grandmother Edith's diaries of her life on the Canadian prairie in the 1880s. This book will make you laugh and cry at the highs and low of life in rural Canada. This is just two of the 85 books that have been published by Stairwell Books over the past 15 years. We publish children's books, literary fiction, genre fiction, memoirs, biographies, short story collections, you name it. We have something for everyone. Come find us online or you can order us in quality bookstores. Thank you. Welcome back to Lauren's Crazy Pet Show. So many wonderful dogs and kitties here. We are at an amazing event at Agway in Southington, Connecticut. Yeah. <laughs> Yay! It's crazy here. Yeah. <laughs> it's so much fun. It's a bark Yes. Did I get it right? Yeah. This is Jenna and this is Mark. And Jenna invited us here. We're having so much fun. Awesome. It, there's so much to do and see, and it's really all for a good cause. Absolutely. The bark our second annual bark is a benefiting Help Willie's friends, they're out of Durham. Mark will share all about it. We're a nonprofit. Okay. We've been around for 13 years, and primarily what we do is we collect food and supplies and donate it back all to the shelters and rescues in the state of Connecticut. Fantastic. How did you get started, Mark? The whole thing was because of our dog, Willie, who we rescued. We decided to have a food drive during the holidays in 06, and it was held at the Agway of all ah. places here. This is where we started. And we did so well, we collected 1,500 pounds wow. in two weeks. And we decided, well, rather than just doing it during the holidays, why don't we do it all the time? Every year, we collect more food. Last year, we did over 100,000 pounds of that food and about 75,000 cans. And then we collect toys and treats and blankets and towels, crates and carriers, I mean, all kinds of things. And then you take what you've gotten and you donate it to different shelters? Yes. And you're helping so many people. I mean, that must feel so fantastic. It does, it really does. And Jenny, this is your second year, right? This is our second year. Like The first year went extremely well and we decided to do it again. I think we have eight different rescues here, six different pet food vendors. We even have doggy ice cream available. Oh, yeah. And before we saw, actually, it was so funny where a dog sort of by mistake, but who knows, maybe they planned it. They knocked <laughs> over a dish of treats and, of course, they ate them oh, up. Oh, no. <laughs> They're so cute. We've also got some human food trucks and just a, a lot of a lot of fun, big things happening. Agway's always been a huge supporter of non profit organizations and Mark's organization has uh, always been close to my heart. Uh, I figured what a better way to help all of the rescues in the state of Connecticut than to donate to Mark because he just kind of helps everybody in need. Isn't that fabulous? And it's so much fun too. And we have to go sample some of that barbecue because it's right over there and that smells delicious. But okay, we want you to hang around everybody. Uh, because when we come back, I am going to show you a sport, okay? And you two could both do it with your pups and maybe even a kitty or two. It's a canine sport that is growing in popularity and it's so much fun. So get on your dancing shoes. Can't wait. <laughs> That's a little hint. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. 
If you love jewelry as much as I do, you have to go to Cohen Brothers Jewelry in New York City. Located in the heart of the Diamond District on 47th Street in Manhattan, Cohen Brothers Jewelry has the most exquisite, beautiful pieces. Handcrafted with diamonds, precious stones, gold, platinum, whatever you could want. They even have pet theme creations. So check out Cohen Brothers Jewelry. And guess what? They're animal lovers too. Welcome back to Lauren's Crazy Pet Show. We are having so much fun at a barbecue in Southington, Connecticut at the Agway. But what would a barbecue be without barbecue? Barbecue. We on have the Chef big Craig green egg. and the big green egg. Jenna is back and Coco Chanel is here because she wants to Let taste me slice you up some. some of this. And she is also a therapy dog and absolutely adorable. So we've got a lot of things going on and one of them is free samples of food cooked on our wonderful big green egg. Oh, and we've been smelling it and it just smells oh Give delicious. that a try. Thank you so much, Craig. See what you think. Mm. Mm. Oh my God, it is so Nothing good. Nothing cooks like a big green egg, envelops the meat, keeps it nice mm. and juicy, doesn't dry it out. I in love it. Heat. This is so good. This is so good. I'm going to enjoy this. Here you go, Coco. And oh. like I said, Coco Chanel is a therapy dog. And we're going to show you a segment now. I think some of these dogs actually do do therapy, but they also can kick up a storm. <laughs> Believe it or not, what you're seeing is actually a serious sport. It's doggy dancing, and it's not only fun to watch, it's fun to do. I'm Lauren Collier, and we're being treated to an amazing demonstration by two top competitors in the field of doggy dancing. Meet Carrie and Laurel and their gorgeous pups. We've got Lyric, we've got Ortiz, and we've got Iggy. Laurel, this is absolutely awesome. It's really a sport that continues to grow and you've been in it for a pretty long time. Yes, Lauren, thank you. Yes, I've been in it for a long time and uh, right from the beginning. And it is a sport that continues to grow because it's so much fun. It's so much fun for you and your dog and it's creative and it really helps build the bond with your dog. So why wouldn't you do it? Carrie, this is really a combination of things. Doggy dancing is not only dancing, but it's also obedience and tricks all combined. Yeah, it combines tricks and obedience and choreography. Um, so we actually work with somebody who's a dance instructor. She actually helped me to choreograph the two routines I did today. But yeah, it uses a lot of, I used a lot of obedience with Lyric when he was doing the backward weaves. I'd get him into the heel position or the place position so that he would be in position to actually do the weaves. So it combines a lot of different things. One of the nice things about the sport is uh, what your dog likes to do. Some dogs love to spin and you can just do a lot of spins in your routine. Other dogs love to do bows and so you can really incorporate what your dog enjoys doing into this and uh, it's a lot of fun. You pick the music you like and go for it. Carrie, I think it's interesting that the dogs are not only diverse, but they're all different ages. Yes, different ages, different sizes. Ortiz is 13 today. I started him when he was four months old and he's been dancing ever since and he still goes out there. He can't hear as well, but he loves what he does. As long as he's with his mama and getting his treats, he's good to go. And Lyric, I started as soon as I got him, seven weeks old, little tiny thing. You know, you can see the bond that this sport really brings. The dogs are really into working with you and looking at you and moving with you. So it's, it's a lot of fun and it really helps to build the bond um, with your dog as well. I don't know who's having more fun, the humans or the dogs. <laughs> what would be your message to people who might be thinking, I don't think my dog can do it, how do I get started? What would you say? I'd say just about any dog can do it and just about any person can do it. And you don't have to compete, you don't have to wear bling, you can just uh, wear whatever you want and do it in your own kitchen that's fun for your dog. Teach them how to spin and kick, and most dogs know a few tricks and just have some fun with it. My old dog that was 15 years old, even though I didn't compete with him anymore, I still practice with him at home because they still really love to work with you and do the moves, and it helps to keep them in shape as well. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, it helps the dog stay active, stay in shape, stay focused. Yeah. So it's really something that anyone can do with any type of dog. Yes. Laurel, Iggy wears many hats. He really is very diverse 
diverse. <laughs> he is. Portuguese water dogs are really fun little dogs, and uh, they really like to be busy. So Iggy does rally, he does obedience, and he has advanced titles in those. Uh, he also does uh, pet therapy, and he is part of the Connecticut's Animal Assisted Crisis Response Team. <laughs> Carrie, how many dogs do you have? Right now I have five, starting from seven months up to 13 years. You actually have alpacas too, beside the five dogs. <laughs> yes, I do. I currently have three, soon to get a fourth one from Six Pack of Farm. I clicker train them. They're super cute and they're, they're a lot of, they're fun. How do the dogs react? The dogs, I don't let go out with them, but they can get very close to them. The two little, the littlest ones that I have, want to hurt them all the time. Well, the alpacas don't dance, do they? No. Well, they don't dance, but they do. I have one that does a lot of tricks. He'll uh, target, he puts his chin on my hand, he'll give me kisses, um, he'll give me hugs, yeah. And if people want to get in touch with you ladies, they want to follow your careers, do it themselves with their pup, where can they go to find more information? The World Canine Freestyle Organization has a website, or just Google. I mean, Google is so easy to use nowadays. Just Google Canine Musical Freestyle, and probably several different organizations will come up. So if the flashy bling type of organization isn't for you, there's other organizations that aren't as flashy that you might enjoy, and the dogs really enjoy it. Oh, uh, they sure did, and so did I. Ah, oh, they are so fabulous. And believe it or not, there's a push on now to make dog dancing an Olympic sport. Wasn't that fun? That was awesome. I know you have cats, Jenny. You think they would do that? No, but well, I'm amazed that some dogs would do Isn't that. Isn't it amazing? It looks like so much fun. Okay, when we come back, we have a really fun segment. I mean, I had no idea how many woolly pets there are right here in Connecticut. We'll be right back, everybody. We're back, Lauren's Crazy Pet Show, having so much fun with Jenna at the Agway in Southington, Connecticut, and this is just great. It's a barbecue. And I tell you, I didn't realize, Jenna, that Agway not only carried things for the traditional pet, but also others. Yeah, we also have farm supplies. Ah. So we've got sheep and goat feed, we've got chicken feed, duck feed, you, you, you name it, we've got it. That is fantastic because we just actually were in Vernon, Connecticut, where we went to a wonderful festival for animals that you might not think would be sort of like a pet, but um, it seems like they're growing more and more popular right here in Connecticut. So I want you to see this. It, it, oh, we had such a blast. Take a look. We are at the 110th Connecticut Sheep, Wool, and Fiber Festival. And Anne, isn't it true? More and more people are getting sheep as maybe pets or as herds? Well, we're seeing more and more small flocks, especially in the New England area, growing over the past few years. More and more people are becoming interested in having sheep, whether it's for mowing their lawns or for raising it for fiber so uh. they can create beautiful yarn or just the enjoyment of having sheep on their property. The Connecticut sheep breeders have been involved since the 1800s and wow. we've been running this festival for over 100 years. And it feels to me like more and more people are getting interested in this, not only as having sheep, but also the whole sort of back to nature farms. And getting really grounded down to earth, um, being more connected to their environment, to their food, to their clothing, to what they wear, and, and actually knitting, spinning, crocheting, and weaving are all seeing a growth uh, as hobbies. And I noticed not only with the sheep wool, but also there are angora rabbits here. There are booths with alpaca things. I didn't realize how many different wools are used and how many different items are being made. Yeah, there are a number of different animals that give us fiber, including angora rabbits, angora goats, alpacas, llamas, and sometimes we even spin dog hair oh, into yes. yarn and knit with that. I think there's maybe 200 breeds of sheep. I don't know how many the exact number is, but there are a lot of different breeds, and many of them are, are found in this part of the country. And they range from sheep that make really great pets because they're mellow or friendly, to some that are a little more skittish and maybe not ideal for for a small farm or a small homestead, but there's a sheep for everybody's palate. So when we talk about sheep, one of the big things here is sheep shearing, and this is the master of sheep shearing. This is Colin. This is Barbara the sheep. Isn't she cute? She likes to talk too. Colin, you are busy here. They need haircuts yes. like we do. Yes, they do. It's essential for their health and well-being 
Uh, if you don't shear them regularly, they're apt to develop lesions because the wool gets so heavy on their skin they'll bruise. They can also overheat very easily because if you're not regularly removing the wool, it's like wearing a wool blanket all summer. Oh, okay, that makes sense. Uh, and the thing is, though, they like it. They do. She's the, the, not complaining. She's just saying, shear yes, me. <laughs> yes. You, you work with the sheep when you're shearing them. You do not work against them. So you do everything possible to keep them comfortable and happy. And I noticed that it didn't take you that long because you're a professional. <laughs> um, but it really is sort of a, there's a method to your madness. So yes. explain how you're doing it. I shear by the Bowen method, which was developed by Godfrey Bowen in New Zealand around <laughs> 1900. And he was the first man to ever shear more than 300 use in a day. In a day? Yes, and in actually an eight-hour day. That's he, a lot of sheep. He revolutionized sheep shearing by developing a pattern of shearing that was both safe and comfortable and allowed the most efficient removal of wool. If, and if you think about it, sheep really just want to be out on pasture by themselves with other sheep being happy. So the less time you can spend working with the sheep shearing it, the happier the sheep is going to be. So everybody wins when you shear efficiently and safely. You know, a really important component of this whole festival is the 4-H club. And I am so happy to meet you, Riley. Riley is the president, and look who she's got boss here, beautiful Angora <laughs> rabbit. And your club does so much. Yeah, so I'm part of Tranquil Menagerie 4-H Club. 4-H is a youth organization that teaches kids um, leadership and different skills they'll need. And so our club specifically, we show um, livestock. So the kids learn a project and they will focus on that throughout the year. And they'll learn how to raise it, how to take care of it, how to show. And at the end, um, in the summer, we have a fair. I love that. Show and off all their skills. This is Haas. <laughs> yes. And he's an Angora rabbit. Yeah, he is. He's um, seven years old. Wow. He gets sheared, actually. Actually, oh, and, just like the sheep? Yeah, he does, <laughs> yeah. Okay. And um, it can be needle felted, spun into yarn, knitted, any anything, the same as the wool. <laughs> what do those 4-H's stand for? Uh, the 4-H's stand for head, heart, hands, and health. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think this is so important. And I think this rabbit is so absolutely beautiful. And oh, this must you. be, this yarn must be expensive. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> bring so much into our lives. You know what? I think I might even get me a sheep. <laughs> They're so cute. Oh, we had so much fun. And you know, if you want to learn more about sheep ownership in Connecticut and places where you can find these beautiful, wonderful wools and fabrics, you can go to the Connecticut Sheep Breeders Association website, ctsheep.org. So maybe you'll want to own a sheep. Maybe. I like them. They're so cute. Oh, they're so cute. They're just so woolly, woolly, woolly. <laughs> we had so much fun today, Jenna. Oh, thanks Thank for Thank you so much for having us here. This is just a great event. And we hope that you all will join us. Lauren's Crazy Pet Show. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram and YouTube. And of course, watch us every Monday morning at 8.30 on the WRNN Network. We're so happy to be here. Thanks for joining us. This is Lauren's Crazy Pet Show.